We are in the grand finals of the Meta Weekly every single week, bro. Click join on YouTube to join the fun. Then click on discord.gg slash Meta. You will be brought to this page of over 59,000 members, hopefully over 60,000 when you click on this. And then within the Discord, you connect your Discord and Twitch to get all these benefits. Weekly, monthly giveaways, free money, new player help, active deck type discussions. All of the Discord is unlocked. One of my favorite parts of the Discord besides the events you could join, it's insane. The questions you could ask, the help you could get, the spicy replays you could share, the spicy win streaks is one of my favorite channels. This is a channel of decks that are not on the tier list, that are getting five or more wins in a row. They are sharing them. Let's keep on scrolling. Oh my, photons, what is this? Whoa, Magician of Chaos, that's a big yoink. I'm yoinking that deck, and we got some Machina. You love to see it. Also, Yu-Gi-Oh! memes, it can get quite spicy, so I'm not gonna click on this right here, right now, live. There might be something too crazy to show. Let's get on with the Grand Finals. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at him. Let's go. It's time Jack Atlas. Versus Yugi. If you watch the tournaments live, you have the ability to vote with your star chips that you get from watching the stream for free on who you think will win. Key to victory, we're going to activate the skill to return a card to play the Galloping Gaia field spell from the deck, which will then allow us to search for a dragon after revealing a Gaia. The Gaia could be summoned without tributing, which will summon the dragon onto the fields, which will result in a fusion summon. The fusion summon Gaia, such a powerful fusion. It will allow you to destroy any card on your opponent's side of the fields during their main phase. Disrupt their play, but it does come at a cost. It will lose 2,600 attack in the process. And it is 2,600 attack. It will go down to zero. So we're going to summon it into D and be ready to destroy a card on our opponent's turn. Guy is known for a good turn one. This is a great turn one. Back in the day, going second was the best way. Now going first is quite powerful in Duel Links. I think due to the consistency skills, we are MSTing, taking out the Forbidden Chalice, which could have negated a monster on the field. Resonator call, search your deck for a Resonator. Grab the Crimson Resonator. Crimson Resonator can be special summoned without committing to your normal summon. This is what's good about Resonators. They can make big plays without even normal summoning, which means once their play gets disrupted, they could then commit to their normal summon and make another big play. With a Crimson Resonator on the field, we are eligible to special summon a Wild Wind. Unless MedZR is thinking about destroying it before he does so. Of course not. We special summon the Wild Wind. Now, did he use his consistency skill? He did not. Resonators could use their skill up to twice per duel, revealing a Resonator to search your deck for any level four or lower fiend. Both players, both decks, both have consistency skills. Let me know in the comments. Do you like consistency skills or are you just upset that your favorite deck doesn't have one? Red Rising Dragon. Activate on summon, special summon, a Resonator from the Grave. Now, this Crimson Resonator will now be able to activate its second effect, which was only activatable if you control a Dark Dragon on the field, to summon a Resonator from the deck. Crimson Resonator, activate. This newly summoned Resonator is going to gain up to 2,600 life. Targets a monster in the fields. Gain life equal to its attack. Chaining Book of Moon after being targeted by the Red Resonator. Okay. Flipping down the Red Rising. Now he's stuck with two tuners on the fields. Instead of destroying the monster, just let him be clogged. And they're both in attack position. What is he doing? What was he planning? Ends his turn without him destroying a card. Now, there is a downside to summoning your Gaia in defense. Because you summoned it in defense, now you have to change it to attack. 
which means if you try to enter the battle phase right now and they book a moon, you're not going to be able to flip yourself back up. Had you been originally in attack position and you attempted to enter the battle phase, you would be able to flip right back up on a book of moon. Now, why is that important? Because the Galloping Gaia turns off all the back row within the battle phase. Completely shut down. Torture's Trap Hole in the end phase, though. Destroy two cards on the field. Taking out the Gaia and taking out his own Resonator was not able to activate the Gaia to destroy a card in the field due to only being able to activate its effect during the main phase. Baldwin banished. Now, you may be thinking, this is a lethal play. Is it? Does he have lethal? Is this the way? Add to Baldwin with the skill. Focus. Crimson Dragon shines upon the inferno. Shine. Red Rising is going to activate to summon the Crimson back onto the field. Crimson could then summon a Resonator from the deck. We're at 2,900 damage so far. Crimson Resonator summoning another 600 to make it 3,500 damage. We're going to gain 2,100 life. We only have 3,500 damage. How do we make this 4,000? Still not enough. Shokan. Into. We're at TCG life. 8,700 life. 3,500 attack. 100 off from lethal. 500, I should say. One more monster summon off from lethal. And just like that, we have enough. 4,300 damage. GG no re. Except we're reing into game two. Let's go. You win. I'll duel until my fire is extinguished, which is never. Which is never. It's my Why is Jack in Arc Five and not Yugi? What a scam! Are you kidding me? Poisonous winds against Gaia? Surely that does nothing, right? That has to do nothing. If we look at a Gaia deck, let's see real quick. Gaia, what's a wind monster? The fusions. The fusion is freaking wind. Oh no. Wind monsters could not be special summoned and all wind monsters lose 500 attack. How does he deal with it? A normal Gaia player is gonna have MST, but he's the one with MST and the wild wind. On freaking believable. Negating the field spell. Is this going to be a quick 2-0 victory? I hope not. Come on, MedZR. Last week, we had the quickest 2-0 I've ever seen. You better win. 2300 to the face. King Crab by possibly overside decking. He did not have a turn one play. Taking that 23. MST did negate. Focus. No Resonator play. This is what you get for Overside decking. Medziar, if you could take this to game three and not lose to a freaking Poisonous Winds. Yes! Don't book him. He's got book. He's got book. Of course he's got book of moon. Flip down the Gaia. Gaia at 2100 defense. King Crab just needs a Resonator. It does not matter what this card is. If he draws no Resonator. Whoa, no Resonator. Probably another Book of Moon, though. <laughs> again. Hit him again. Giddy up. 2300 to the face. Another Book of Moon. Not the newly drawn, though. So maybe the newly drawn is not Book of Moon. What do you think? If he draws a Resonator... He just needs any Resonator. This card does not matter. He just needs a Resonator. And, oh, there you go. What I was about to say is, what does drawing a Resonator mean when their deck is how many Resonators? Well, if we go to the website, let's check out Resonators. Pretty much the whole deck is Resonators. If we look at a sample deck, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Only two of the Resonator calls? Not the new way to play? No way. Why are you dropping that to two? Are you out of your mind? 
adds a wild wind, then sets it. He's not making a play. Whoa, does he have treacherous trap hole? Does he have treacherous skill hole? MST not even onto the poisonous winds, takes out a chalice. What? What the? Now, if you have learned legal cheating through my non-tournament streams, you would know that the face down card 100% could not be a treacherous. 100% toggle off on auto. It does not matter. You would know with that MST that you are not MSTing a treacherous. No more playtime. Take out the Wild Wind. It would read like a Book of Moon. Wild Wind could banish itself to search for a Resonator. Wild Wind gets searching. Banish from the grave. Search your deck for a Resonator. This will be the second and last time we could use this skill to search his deck for a level four Lower Fiend. Neither player touching their extra decks. Resonator call in addition to adding the Crimson Resonator. Red Resonator could special summon a level four or lower from the hand. Normally, you do not do that, though. You want to make your top play around not normal summoning. Reveal the Crimson, return a random other card. Not random, you actually get to choose. And add a Wild Wind from the deck to the hand. This will ensure we can make a big synchro play without committing to a normal summon. Possibly being able to play through a disruption. Medzi are thinking. He MST in. You always go for the middle, people, without even thinking they set their best card in the middle. So his best card was a Kanadia. Crimson Resonator special summon onto the fields. Chalice set, that's what they're thinking. They're thinking there's a chalice. Wild wind. If he chalices a red resonator, then the red resonator dragon's gonna be bigger than the Gaia. Red rising. Red rising, summon a resonator from the grave. If we negate this, it will become bigger. If we think he has a chalice, chalice is a very popular card in Gaia. It is. It is, in fact, a chalice. Now, I want you to understand that the Resonator player is out of skills. No more skill. His skill is gone. Skillless deck. He's still afflicted by the poisonous winds, preventing him from fusion summoning. Gaia special summon. Dragonfire. We can't fusion. <laughs> can't, can't fusion because the poisonous winds. But we're still big enough to take out the Red Rising. This has to be a level four or lower. It has to be a level four monster. It has to be a wild wind. If he didn't draw it, then he's in trouble. Crimson Resonator. Did you top? You did not top deck into a wild wind. Your third and final wild wind. How lucky. That's so lucky. No way. I cannot believe it. That's pretty much the only card. Maybe he could have had a doom cow. He maybe had just one other card. There was probably one to two cards that he could have out of 10 cards in his deck. Only one to two. Unbelievable. Summoning the Crimson Resonator. Crimson Resonator summon a Red Resonator. Going to gain 2,300 life. Big Baboost. That top deck. That rip into the third and final Wild Wind. May be exactly what he needed to secure a 2-0 victory in the Grand Finals. Gaia can top deck an MST. Now, I want you to remember, he MST'd a Chalice. That was not reading like a treacherous. It was not even a chance that it could be a treacherous. If we look at a Resonator deck, what was it reading like? It was reading like a potential Book of Moon Chalice or a Breakthrough Skill. It was not reading like an MST, not reading like a treacherous. He MST'd it knowing that it would not be treacherous nor an MST. 
when he could have MST the poisonous winds. Archfiend Bane is here. We battle him. 1200 activating the Archfiend Bane to summon a resonator from the deck and from the grave in defense, though. Let it rip. MST. MST. Negate the poisonous winds. Destroy it. That's not his newly drawn card. He already had that, so there's hope. There's hope. Oh, no, he went to battle. He went to battle. He went to battle. He is in battle. Taking out the Crimson Resonator. That's his third and final Gaia, is it not? Yeah. What is he going to do now? What? He, he needs the Dragon's Mirror. Dragon's Mirror is pretty much his only play. But he's got double the poisonous winds. I can't believe this. What the cheese? I don't think he can win now. There's no way. He probably has dead uh, Dragon's Mirror in his hand. Dragon's Mirror could fusion summon using the graveyard, but not with the poisonous winds on the field due to the Gaia being a wind. Wind monsters cannot be special summoned. I refuse to lose. My turn. All he needed was an MST. Now he needs two. Now he's behind on an MST. I bet he drew MST. I can't believe it. He was one turn behind. One freaking turn. He's Pepe carding. He's just like, I can't, I can't believe this. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Time to battle. Take out the Crimson Resonator. It looks like that back row card is not an MST. It's something to deal with the Bane. The Bane attacking over the Dragonfire, that's lethal damage. That's 1,500 lethal. There's no way he would put it into attack. Double wins. Keck W. He's going for it. He's going for it. Lip. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, Chalice. What? <laughs> you got to Chalice your own monster? Oh my Jesus! Barely hanging on by 300 life. I could not believe it. What could he top deck into? If he could deal with his Archfiend Bane, then he could be in a good spot. What deals with it, though? Newly drawn, newly set, attack directly. Send the fool. Send him back. Back to Fortnite. Med ZR falls to King Crab. With his poisonous wind deck. My techniques are getting more powerful. And one step closer to a perfect duel. <laughs> Let's get to the meta weekly results. Here are the full results. Onomat's still dominating. But Onomat's did not win. So you tell me, are Onomat's fine? Or should they be nerfed? Should the skill be nerfed? The sister's at two. The head's at two. But the skill could be used twice. Maybe it should be once. Gaia closely in second place. Very good. Thunder Dragon, Gaia, Resonator, Harpies. All squeaking in there at more than one top. It looks like the other decks are kind of random. The Vendra deck I'm really excited to look at. Let's start off with the top two. Let's scroll, scroll, scroll. And now we have the prices on the decks. For now, which will be fixed... It's including the price of the side deck. So don't freak out because the side deck could be kind of expensive. You'll mostly just care about the main deck. So good job, Med ZR with the Gaia deck. And this is the side deck. Let's go to first place. King Crab. Very good. He won the... He got double poisonous wins for that 2-0 victory. Has an Obelisk, the Tormentor, in the side deck. I think that their wild win should go to two, just saying. But obviously, it's a bigger priority to hit on mats first. Now, let's get to the rest of the decks. Top 16. Thunder Dragons. Beautiful. Mountie. Top 16. Very good. Looking similar to the first place deck, but we got a Caius. Razuya. Razuya. Cyber Dragon. Triple Fusion Gates. Triple Cosmic Cyclone. Well built, well made. Surprise Drowning. Dipsalin with an Onomat deck. Lots of back row. Wow. 
Perseus with the Harpies. Everyone's playing Book of Moon. Konami, what are you doing? You got to release this soon. I think it's coming soon. In another month, everyone's going to have Book of Moon. Don't worry. Ooh, Luna Lights. Triforcetops, who talked about this in our half off box video for this possibly being good. Automats. Nothing too crazy, nothing too special. <laughs> More Automats. Okay. And another Harpy deck. Looking similar to the other one. This is what I'm talking about. Lorenzo Roma. This is great. Nezim with the Thunder Dragons. And yes, Mythyard with a 50k gem. Vendrid deck that is including the side deck at the moment. We'll be fixing that soon. Very nice. The Dejin Demolisher of Rituals making yourself untargetable. The Executor making all, every other card untargetable. The Revenants giving you the ability to banish specials on monsters. The Hound Horde banish back row. The deck almost has everything. The only issue with this deck would be consistency. If you actually make the plays, you're unstoppable. So very good. More on a mat. Another Thunder Dragon deck, but he's playing Rhino Bus. He did the best and he had Rhino Bus. Rhino Bus, and it did put in the work. Great. Good job. And that is the full top 32. Very good. Those are just top 16 decks. Love it. Fools.